okay so coming to the third one that is photoelectric effect so in photoelectric effect what happens is the x-ray so here is your x-ray the incident x-ray here is the uh, body atom atom from the body let's say this is 100 kilo electron volt incident proton so this will interact with a electron that is in the k shell so this interacts with the electron over here and it has energy such that it can eject the k shell electron so because of this high energy x-ray the k shell electron is ejected and what happens is there is a vacancy that is created over here there is no electron here a vacancy is created and because there is this vacancy we have seen during characteristic radiation that because there is a vacancy over here what will happen is a electron from a higher orbit will jump to a lower orbit and while it does this a x-ray will be emitted and this x-ray will be emitted with a different energy again this is the characteristic x-ray and hence this depends on the atom uh, with which it is interacting so there will be a x-ray with wavelength lambda 2 that will be emitted at first so these numbers that you see over here 33510 these are the binding energies of this particular atom and you saw that there was a 100 kilo electron volt incident photon when it interacted with this electron the electron got ejected with 67 kilo electron volt because uh, there is 33 electron volts that uh, that were gone to remove this particular electron from the influence of the nucleus and uh, that's because and so yeah so because there was a vacancy over here another electron jumped over here and now there is a vacancy over here because of which another higher level electron will jump over here and it will emit another x-ray uh, with lambda 3 and this will go on so this is an electron cascade that will go on and if you see over here uh, lambda 1 which is the incident photon wavelength that is the lowest so wavelength is inversely proportional to energy and hence if the wavelength is small that means the energy is high so this is highly energetic this has a lot of energy lambda 2 is the second highest in terms of energy but second last in terms of wavelength lambda 3 is the third highest in terms of energy and so on So, for photoelectric effect, there is this uh, kinetic energy of ejected electron because there was this electron that got ejected. So, the kinetic energy of ejected electron, this 67 kilo electron volts is nothing but this incident photon energy minus the binding energy. That's it. So, energy of incident photon minus the binding energy of ejected electron. So, for photoelectric absorption to occur, the incident photon energy must be greater than or equal to the binding energy. This is the main, uh, main criteria or main necessity because if let's say this is smaller than 33, nothing will happen. So, yeah, so that should be greater than the binding energy. The ejected electron is most likely one whose binding energy is closest to but less than the incident photon energy. So, this should be less than but closest. So, it is highly likely that 
the photon if it is having a lot of energy will interact with uh, the k cell uh, k k k orbit electron uh, another i mean interesting discussion is what i found over here as to why so there is always this question which kind of remains unanswered as to why only the k shell electron is emitted no no again why it is more probable that the k shell electron is emitted so there is an interesting discussion over here if you are curious and yeah okay again over here the atom is ionized but the good thing over here is that you get a electron cascade because of which there is more amount of x ray that is produced again the amount is more but the energy is less so this is the difference between intensity and energy so the, there are more x rays that could be produced but uh, the energy of each x ray is less um not every photoelectric effect will emit x ray why can anybody say what can be the other process we have discussed this exactly so this is exactly the same thing as characteristic radiation because these all are characteristic radiation waves so the other thing that can happen is auger electrons so this is another bad thing so if there is photoelectric effect there is a good chance that you can get x rays in the same direction but then there is also a probability associated with uh, auger electrons so it is also possible that you don't get any x ray out so that particular part of the body uh, wouldn't be then able i mean that region wouldn't be imaged and the probability of the characteristic x ray emission decreases as the atomic number of the absorber decreases so over here this particular atom is the absorber so if the atomic ener uh, if the atomic number is low the sorry the probability of characteristic emission decreases so again we have we studied this uh, while we did auger electrons and uh, does characteristic emission does not occur frequently for diagnostic energy photon interactions in soft tissue because soft tissue usually has low atomic number elements and because it has low atomic number elements uh it is more probable for an auger electron to get ejected in, instead of x ray okay any any questions with this is this clear okay this is a very silent class okay now what is the probability that x ray will emit in photoelectric effect so it turns out that there is also a probability associated with uh, in the case of photoelectric effect so the probability of photoelectric absorption per unit mass is approximately proportional to z cube by e cube so notice it is proportional to the energy of the incident photon so if you image a body with high energy x rays that will give you a lower quality image so very high uh, energetic x rays are not only good for uh, are bad for the body are not only bad for the body but also bad for the image so there is this range that we call as diagnostic radiology or diagnostic range i'll show you in the next slide so we we only use that because if we use very high energetic um, x rays 
the probability of uh, photoelectric effect emitting uh, x-ray decreases and again with atomic number it increases so higher uh, higher elements or elements with higher atomic number have are more likely uh, with photoelectric effect to emit uh, x-rays again there are no scattered photons over here so there is no image degradation that takes place but there is certainly ionization because the electron is uh, ejected so that is bad but there is no uh, degradation of the image x-ray image so here is a graph of uh, energy of the incident photon on the x-axis so basically the energy of this the photon that came interacted with the atom that's on the x-axis and on the y-axis we have percentage photoelectric absor absorption on this y-axis and there is percent Compton scatter on this y-axis so so this blue region over here is our diagnostic radiology we usually use x-rays which are in between 20 to about 80 kilo electron volts <clears throat> and you can see that the bone lies over here so what this is saying is let's say i pick a particular uh, number let's say i have 50 let's say i have an x-ray uh, of 50 kilo electron volt that is incident on a bone it is more probable that that particular area of the bone or that particular atom of the bone will emit x-rays because it is more probable for photoelectric uh, photoelectric absorption there okay not x-rays so it is more probable for photoelectric absorption then it is for Compton scatter so that's the reason why we can actually see bone uh, as a higher uh, as bright so this is bright because uh, it is more chance that uh, it can have um, x-rays in the correct path <clears throat> on the other hand if you see tissue for the same 50 kilo electron volt it is more probable for the tissue to have a Compton scatter than uh, for a photoelectric absorption so that's why tissue is not that clear in x-rays bones are relatively more clear okay so this axis is photoelectric absorption and notice it is from 0 to 100 this axis is Compton scatter and notice it is from it is the opposite 0 is above and 100 is below now there is Rayleigh scattering as well but Rayleigh is very less likely so it's mostly these two that compete so if there is a photoelectric absorption the Compton uh, will be less so let's say if there is a 70% chance for a photoelectric absorption there will roughly be 30% chance for Compton scatter okay so yeah so one of these four things could have happened relay scattering is less probable pair production is almost uh, very very less likely uh, but these two are what compete. 